It is one of the abiding images of modern Russian history. The famous picture of Boris Yeltsin speaking on a tank outside the parliament in Moscow on the 19th of August 1991. It was a moment when the future of the Soviet Union hung in the balance. That morning, a group of communist hardliners had staged a coup against Mikhail Gorbachev. Now, the Soviet leader was trapped in Crimea and troops and tanks were on the streets of Moscow. It seemed like the era of Glasnost and Perestroika was coming to an end. That is the closest that Russia has come to a coup since the founding of modern-day Russia in 1917 after the revolution. A few days after this unsuccessful coup, Ukraine and Belarus formally declared independence from the Soviet Union, thereby paving the way for the collapse of the Soviet Union four months later in December of 1991. But now, 30 years later, there is whole new buzz around a second coup in Russia, this time against Vladimir Putin. That his closest partners and advisors, the Siloviki as they're known, distancing themselves from the president. Do they want to put the blame of this war on the president's doorstep? On Crux Decode, who are the Silovarks? And what is their power equation with Vladimir Putin? And most importantly, do they have the power? Can they unseat Putin from office? Now, it's been claimed that former Russian generals and KGB officials have been making plans to remove Vladimir Putin from the top job in the country. It's thought that the plan would be to oust Putin, who has reportedly survived multiple assassination attempts in the past, this is a bid to try and end the bloody war in Ukraine. Putin himself is now said to be bracing for a coup as high-powered groups that are close to him want him removed. And the objective is that they want to lay the blame for the war in Ukraine at the president's door. Various media reports have claimed that top individuals are increasingly frustrated with the lack of military progress in the war in Ukraine. And for the very first time, this is driving a wedge between the Siloviki and the president. The Russian president has been bracing for a coup for some weeks now because he's been facing fierce criticism over the special operation in Ukraine. In fact, Vladimir Putin, since this war began, has purged around 150 of his own spies. So then who exactly are the Silovarks? The Silovarks are a group of Russian power elite who rose to the top through business success in the 1990s. They are the meeting point between the state and the power of business. A professor of political science at the University of California, Los Angeles, Daniel Treisman, coined the term Silovark in 2006. Now, the word Silovark itself is a combination of Siloviki and oligarch. Siloviki translates as the force of the people. It includes top dogs in the security services and in law enforcement. The Siloviki are in effect part of the innermost circle of Vladimir Putin. Putin himself is a Siloviki because he's a former member of the KGB. Russia's army is deeply unhappy at the new and curtailed strategy which President Vladimir Putin has ordered to adopt in Ukraine. The initial goal was the total capture, the total surrender of Ukraine. To go out there and make sure that Kiev, the capital, falls. And of course, in a war, it's when the capital falls that the country falls. Its army falls. That's when you have victory and defeat in a war. But that initial goal has now been abandoned by Moscow. Now it's a much more modest goal, that of liberation of Donbass in the east. And the military is holding other agencies who are in charge of security as responsible for this mess. In fact, they're pointing a finger primarily at the FSB's foreign intelligence branch for misinforming the president about the true nature of conditions inside Ukraine. FSB versus military, it opens up a new dimension of power politics inside Russia. It's evident from the curious case of Sergei Beseda. He was one of the heads of the fifth service of the FSB. The job of this particular wing is to gather political intelligence in Ukraine, also to cultivate pro-Kremlin opposition in Kiev. Now, this particular general, he was sent to the infamous Lefortovo prison in Moscow. It has had a horrible reputation since the Stalin purges in the 1950s. Innumerable victims have been murdered in the basement of this building. 
The Kremlin has made frantic efforts to hide the details of General Beseda's arrest, going so far as to change the general's name in prison records. The investigative committee, which is Russia's main investigation authority, went so far as to deny Beseda's criminal prosecution. But the videos of General Beseda's plight have recorded millions of views on Russian YouTube. They were widely debated on pro-Kremlin telegram channels. The rumor mill went wild, suggesting that compromising material on Beseda was provided by its rival agency, the Foreign Intelligence Service, the SVR. So then, what exactly is going on here? Is such interdepartmental rivalry common among Russia's power elite? It is possible, because after all, wherever there are groups of humans in different collectives, all pursuing different objectives, politics can't be too far away. There is a serious difference between the military and the intelligence agencies about the Ukraine war. Russia's military believes that limiting the war is a serious error. They're now arguing that Russia is not fighting Ukraine, instead Russia is fighting NATO. Senior officers therefore have concluded that the Western alliance is fighting through the all-out increasing supply of sophisticated weaponry to Ukraine. The military is now demanding an all-out war, including a full-throttle national mobilization. Many in the Russian army were expecting President Putin to call for a full national mobilization in his Victory Day speech on the 9th of May. But that was not to be. Putin gave no such call, which only furthers the army's suspicions that the FSB is misleading the president. Now, what's interesting and what is absent uh, in all these discussions within the military, whether it's public discussions or private, is any form of criticism towards Sergei Shoigu. He is the Minister of Defense. Shoigu is the public face of the war in Ukraine. Somehow, Sergei Shoigu has succeeded in keeping the respect of the military and redirecting all of the anger away from him. In fact, much of the anger is being redirected at intelligence agencies as well as other arms of the defense services. Privately, the army and the secret services have even blamed not just the fifth service of the FSB for misinforming the president, but they've also blamed the president himself for making a bad call on changing military strategy. Now, if you remember back in 2014, when the Russian army occupied Crimea, the military and the security services were on the same page with Putin. They fully supported his decision to annex Crimea. They were enthusiastic about the way it was done. And very significantly, it was done in a matter of a few weeks. That is very different from the situation that we are here in 2022. The question is, what will be the fallout of this different situation? What will be the fallout of what is now a very muddled war effort in Ukraine? Will it cost Putin? Will it cost his defense minister? Or will there be clarity at the end of a few more weeks of deadly clashes between Russia and Ukraine?